Alrighty, we got Dane here this morning. This is a new friend of mine. We just met recently because of the LS engine. Um, Jeff, our wood guy, introduced us more or less. He said yep. that Dane was into the LSs. I've got some parts that Dane's got me to order. So basically, all you're going to do, be doing on this one is watching us go through or watching us go through everything. Dane's going to explain it to me. And why is he explaining it to me? You obviously can watch and you can learn just, just as well as I am. Because basically that's what I'm doing right at the present moment. I'm learning, I am learning about the LS. That's yeah. about, about the end of it. My goal is to teach you how to do it so that you guys can do you, more in you the future, right? You don't want to do it all for me? <laughs> no, unfortunately not. <laughs> you don't in want the, to do it all for me. Yeah, in the future you guys can do on different cars and they're a popular motor and they're easy to get right now, right? They're yeah. pretty affordable. So. I can teach you that it's not super scary and intimidating like a lot of people think it is then mm. you know that would be sort of the end result, end goal right so what i am starting to realize it's not that cheap you have to buy some stuff there's some stuff you got to buy yeah. but it now that you know the parts are required maybe you're at a swap meet you might pick up a fuel pump or you might yeah. you know you might pick this up somewhere else like it's just for me i always seem to find deals on that stuff you're, you're talking my I'm kind of licorice now yeah see? exactly so you'll know what to look for now going forward so so we've got a what a 5.3 LS, and it is is it of a 207 truck? Yeah. So I, I'm re, I'm starting to realize that the truck oil pan is different than a car oil pan. Yeah, it's a lot lower. Yeah. Um, you have to buy the mounts to put on the engine to put it in place of a 350. Yeah. And I have those thing here. I might as well get those too. Yeah. You can pull out some of that stuff too, if Dane, if you want, just to check it out and see what's going on there. And basically, we, we might as well make this video about what, what, is, what is required to, to make an LS work. And I obviously know that, or I've come to understand, that you can make the original wire and harness work. You can. You can cut a bunch of stuff out of it. Uh, but I just wasn't interested in having something cut, spliced, and all that stuff. I just well, wanted a nice wire and harness. It's 20-year-old wiring, right? So yeah. you could splice it all up and do it perfect, but then you might have a wire break. Halfway else. through a drive somewhere, and not it's interested. Not worth the, the headache. Not rate. interested. Yeah, so. so first, basically, uh, what I did is I ordered these things here. These mounts went on the engine of the 5.3. They went on here. This is where where the old mount was, and this is where the new Chevy mount was. It moved it forward on the engine. So you would have to order something like this if you were putting the LS in the place of your 350, and you wanted to go in the exact place that your original engine was. You would have to order these don't have to you can make them obviously but it just seems for the price and the cost and the time that's the way to go so that's what I did with the engine to get it in place of the 350 because I had a 350 in it and I just ordered these to to make it simple so that's that's the first step to putting an LS into where your 350 was. So now you got an excuse to do another LS. I do got an we, set, we right? got a wagon outside yeah um, and I think that it's got a six cylinder in it and it would be nice to have a an LS in it just to yeah you know yeah. I don't know. Why not? Well, exactly. Why yeah. not? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so basically, the main thing that this would need where an old small block wouldn't is a high pressure fuel system, right? So okay. that's why I had to get, that's, that was a little bit pricey, but you, I got you to order like a really good high performance fuel pump. So okay. this will get mounted on so your So how frame. many PSI would that be? Uh, it should be around 60 PSI, 50, okay. 60 PSI roughly. So Some the, of them are more. It wouldn't more. do a carburetor any good. No, no, no. no. And uh, this here is your fuel filter regulator and all in one, right? So it does, it filters it and it also regulates the pressure. Okay. Um, so your intake manifold uh, has a single outlet on the fuel, like a single inlet on the fuel rail. Yeah. Some of them have a, an inlet and an outlet for yeah. the turn. So this makes your life easier because you're only gonna run one line, a pressure line from the tank to this and yes. then a return line from this to the tank. So you can put this right close to the tank on the frame. Okay. So then you have two lines going from the tank to this and then one line coming out. going from this to your fuel pump and then from the fuel pump to the engine. Okay. So some so this this, this be comes different. before the fuel pump. This is or before. Before yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and then this is just like a little switch kit I got you to order just because you didn't have like a, you know, a traditional ignition and everything. Yeah, I've so, cut that out of my car. I'll hide, yeah. I can hide that somewhere, can I not? Yeah, if you don't like the looks of it or if you want to hide it like up under the dash, it's more or less just to give you something so you can turn on power and turn, like put power to the starter to turn yeah. it over, right? So that's going to be your sort of push to start. I'm going to hide that probably, no doubt in my mind, yeah. just because of the look of it. Like It doesn't really match the air of the car. It's more of a race car thing, but yeah. Yeah, you can get ones that are a little bit more 
you know, discreet. And, or and when I did subtle. my dash, I cut all my, I cut my keys to switch out. I cut a, a bunch of stuff. So that had, I had to have something. Yeah. I have to have something like that somewhere to start the engine. Yeah, obviously. like you don't have to use this plate. You can take this the switch off too, yep. right? So you could just have the push button right beside the steering wheel somewhere if you have a spot for it. But oh, whatever works, right? Somewhere. Yeah, whatever works for you. Um, yep. These are just a couple of little fittings that would go on the on the fuel filter regulator if you want to use like AN fuel lines. So I don't know what kind of fuel lines you normally like to what use. What kind like of fuel lines? AN they're called. They're like braided okay. rubber hoses with like aluminum fittings on the end. I haven't used any of these clips here before. So they're just kind of a push on thing and that's yeah. it? Yeah, so those, yeah, those would go, like if you had the factory style connectors, those yeah. would go on sort of like that and then the, the fuel line would click on, right? So it okay. depends on the, what sort of setup you're gonna use. Okay, so. see that's gonna be new to me too. Yeah. Usually I, for me, it's just a rubber line and a hose clamp. Yeah, you can do that if you want. Okay. You know, it just gotta remember that it's high pressure, so you're gonna wanna use you know, good quality rubber line and try not to, you know, try not to have sp big, big spans of rubber line, you know, okay. short pieces really good hose clamps would be ideal um, but a lot of people are you know if, if they want to spend more money and be more particular they would use AN lines which are those fancy they almost look like hydraulic hoses but yeah. very small so it really depends so um, if there's not a whole bunch of them I'd probably just go for it and make sure yeah. that it's not gonna leak and all that sort of stuff yeah exactly yeah I mean as long as it's these not are leaking. just hold downs for yeah those are just hold downs for the fuel pump okay here. so what I'll do is I'll put this stuff back in the box and we'll kind of go through a couple things on the harness yeah. really quickly also, on a, on a carburetor car, I, I come to realize that you only need, like, any more than five pounds pressure, you're looking for trouble on a carburetor. Yeah, yeah. I, I've come to realize that. I've put a couple electric fuel pumps on some of the rides that we've done, and uh, it's done nothing but mess them Cause up. Cause problems, yeah. Yeah, nothing but mess them up. Now I have to go back all over all the cars and uh, turn down the fuel pressure. Yeah. So this is always the scariest part for most people. And the people. reason I said that is because maybe some people don't know, and I, like yeah, I didn't know. For sure. Yeah. So the nice thing about this setup is your computer will be inside the car, yeah. you know, if you want it to be, and you plug this into the computer, and you're going to have an OBD2 port. So if there's something wrong with the engine and you don't know what's wrong, you can scan the code just like you would on your Suburban. Okay. And say, hey, Dan, I got this code. What's going on? What do I do? You know, yeah. or whatever, right? Um, and then this is just like a little fuse panel and a relay panel. Okay. So part of this, part of the process that we'll have to go through is we'll have to put the relay in here for the fuel pump, and we'll also have to put um, a little, you know, a little connector, like yeah. a metal connector on the wire we use, right? Yeah. So I think the reason they do that is because depending on the person, you might want to use thicker wire if you're running dual fuel pumps or if you're running a really long span. So they don't want to put small wire on here in case... Okay. You know, this fuel pump requires they quite a bit to, of power. They, they right? want so you to set it up. They want you to set it up because that's a bit of liability. You want to make sure that you have the right size wire for your application, right? If you have, right. you know, high performance fuel pump like that, it's going to draw quite a bit of juice. Juice, yeah. So, okay. Um, I think I gave you some thick wire last time I saw you. Probably so that'd did. Probably be good. Should for I that. bring that box out too? Sure. Yeah. Whatever you got, we'll okay. go through it all. I think there's another. Yeah. You bring. You give me some goodies last time. Yeah. And this right here is the hose that you're talking about, that braided hose, is that what you're talking That's the AM, what is it called? AM line? Um, what kind of line is yeah, that? Yeah, that, that uh, that's kind of a good example of it. That's not for fuel, but that's for oil, so. Okay. Um, this was, I had a bunch of these kicking around, but uh, this would be something that you would run, I'll show you sort of on the car. So I gave you a little fitting that would go above the oil filter. Don't even know where that's at on this engine yet. Oil filter's down there. Okay, I see where the oil filter. So yep. you'd, you'd connect this to there, and you could run it up under the firewall into your dash to your oil pressure gauge, right? Gotcha. Okay, so that's my oil pressure gauge right there. That's Just your oil pressure line, yeah. Right on. Cool. And that should thread on the little piece that I gave you right here. Yeah. So above your oil filter, there's two bolts, and okay. there's a piece on there, like a cap off. So you just take that off, put this one on. And gotcha. This, sh this should thread right under there, so. Wow. This, man, I got some good stuff. I'm thinking ahead there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, that's just an extra belt, so we'll get that out of the way. So this is your mass airflow sensor. This one you want to be really careful not to drop it or anything. It's, just, it's like a fine filament inside. See so that? See the fine, little fine, looks like a hair. That hair there? I was gonna, I was gonna clean that out and take that off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Don't do that? No. So that goes on the front of... That goes on your intake, so... That's kind of an extra step that you'll, you'll have, have to excuse me because I don't know shit about. Yeah, that's okay. okay. Yeah, that goes on. So the front you might of that. have an intake. Let's say you have like a tubular can, intake. Can, right? can I leave it right there? 
or will hit it's the same. not good to have it too close to the throttle body okay. because you don't want too much turbulence to go across this okay. when it's reading so it's good to have it like i think the rule of thumb is like at least 12 inches away so let's say you have an air, air intake that goes off like this yeah or maybe you have a hole right that goes down the fender yeah you right. could have it over, over here and your cone filters right there and you'd have a nice tube going in right okay and uh for that you can use like some people like to use stainless steel but it you know gets hot or aluminum piping whatever you can get your Muster hands up. on yeah, yeah. okay and some couple of couplers gotcha Hopefully this one's good. <laughs> we guess okay. we'll find out. So if it's not, I don't mean you just have to get another one. That's all. Junk air. And yeah. how and how would I know if it's good or not? Just try it out and see if it gives you an error code or something like that. Then okay. You know. Yeah. And there's three little. I see three little. I put my glasses yeah. on. There's three little. You can see the little tiny things inside there. Little tiny wires inside there. It's a really good tool because, you know, like back in the day when you had a car that was misfiring, you'd have to try and figure that out yourself. But that actually detects which cylinder is misfiring based on when the turbulence and air has changed. Gotcha. And then you can see on your OBD2 port with your scanner, you know, okay. what's going on. So it's a, it's a good thing to have. Yeah. Uh, the rest is just like That's some little sure. odds and ends. Um, there's your no extra knock sensor harness because yours was damaged on your top of your motor, right? Yeah, so, I know. It's yeah. one wire was off. Yeah. So that just be, that just pulls out, unplugs, and put back, put that one in place. Yeah, when you take when you put these on, I use a long pair of needle nose, and I yeah. squeeze them a little bit, or when you take them off, anyways. Yeah. Because these are very brittle; they're old, old brittle pieces of plastic. Right? Yeah. Gotcha. And those are just a couple of uh, tranny bolts for you. you probably could have used those the other day. I probably could have used those the, the other copper, day. You got that right. Copper thread ones. Yeah. Um, a couple water pump gaskets in there and stuff. Yeah. And that's your gasket for this guy. Look at that now, would you? Water pump gaskets. Look at that. It's crazy, all kinds of good stuff. Yeah. And some, those are torque converter? Yeah, those are your torque converter bolts, yeah. Gotcha. I, I got a couple of them in there somewhere. They're those are for your steam steam pipe crossover pipe. Yeah. Right here, so there should be a little. I've got a pipe across. there, yeah. yeah. Is there one in the back on this one too? No, or? there wasn't one in the back. Okay. Yeah, there were some just, of them they were just closed off. Perfect, yeah. Does it matter? No, that's perfect, that's what you want. Okay. Less things to go wrong, so less things to rust out. This wire would be for? I would suggest using that for the fuel pump. It's, it's oh. slightly overkill, but it doesn't hurt. And it's, you know, yeah, you got it anyway. I understand well what it. you're saying. Yeah, and then you'll have a nice ground going to the chassis. Yeah. So some other things that you'll have to do is you'll have to, you know, once you get your battery in and everything, wherever that's going to, is that going to be in the engine bay or will that be in the back? Um, probably in the engine bay. I like to hide it. Yeah. So you'll have to run like a good ground wire to the chassis and then a good... Probably a battery somewhere yeah. right around here somewhere, I'm so, hoping. So run a, a nice big ground wire to the chassis, like my sure yeah. those big copper connectors are good for that. And then a good ground wire from the motor to the chassis too, right? Yeah. So that it, you know, if it's not grounding through the motor mounts. Um, and then, yeah, we'll have to, you know, run your harness and see where that's going to lie. And there'll be a little bit of wiring under the dash just to get like the ignition feeds and the accessory and all yeah. that. But it's, it's not as bad as you might think. And... And the one nice thing about this harness is you can't really plug anything in the wrong spot, more or less. Yes, yeah, so the, the plug-in's for the hole. It's plug and play, right? Yeah. So plug you plug, plug it in, and, you, and if it doesn't fit, <laughs> you know, then you know you're in the wrong spot. So, so this I'm taking this must be the, the, the grommet that goes through the firewall? Yep. Yeah, that's the grommet. Gotcha. Yeah. And they, I think the book says two-inch hole saw for that. So it looks bigger than that to me. It looks, does that look like two-inch in, that inside it, diameter? You can measure it, I guess, with a caliper or something. I would say it does, you know, yeah. it's like two inch. It might be a little bit bigger, I'm not sure. But, but for now, you got a massive hole there anyway, so we can... No, kinda... it's going... Oh, uh, or it's get... actually, usually that... it goes on this side, the harness. Okay, that's my yeah. brake system. That's your brake system. Oh, so you don't want to do it yeah. there, yeah. Yeah, usually it goes on this side, and then that way you can get it, if you have to mess with the ECU, it's right underneath your dash on the passenger yeah, okay. side. Okay, so everything underneath, well, I got every... well, the dash is not in it, so yeah, that's um, okay. that, the, the, the firewall I've got stuck out there that kept stuck out there quite far yeah. i'm not sure yet my dash i've kind of deleted everything in the dash and my instrument panel i've got back in there yeah. just don't know if i'm going to use it i'm kind of wondering i might put all my gauges in this piece yeah i might just for something different than having it in the dash well the nice thing about what you can do with this i don't know how technical you want to get with it but with that obd2 port right you can put a little bluetooth thing in and you can use a phone or a tablet and you can see all your gauges off of that as well if you want to get fancy with it so I, I don't know for your tack and your speedo and all that okay. stuff, right? It's, so it's, I can hook up a Bluetooth on that wiring harness. Yeah, and then you can have a tap like if you have an iPad or something, you can mount that on the dash or. Okay. Something to think about, anyways. <laughs> it's not a. It's not a must. That would have. be Jolene's. <laughs> that would be your thing, would it yeah. not? Yeah. Yeah, not my thing. Um, but that's okay if it's. 
her thing and not my thing. But uh, yeah, so what I would suggest is if we can open up that door, yeah. we can kind of figure out, let's look in there and figure out where you want to try and mount the ECU, I guess. Okay. And, the, and that is, what's, that? you're calling that the, comp that's the that's computer? That's the ECU, yeah. ECU? Yeah. <laughs> I've been to the, what's it called? The, um, what's the hospital thing called? ICU. Huh? <laughs> ICU. I've been there before, but I've never had one. You're more, I'll, I'll clean some stuff out there for you. Just have a seat yeah. and have a sit down for a second. I'm not sure if that's, you have to excuse my mess. That's all right. And I don't know if the seat's really bolted down. But yeah, I was go just going to kneel down here, yeah, Chad, if that's it. okay. So like, you know, uh, you might have a hole, let's say the hole is here, for example. You can take it up in the other spot there if you, you know, want. You know, like this, this might even be a good spot. To be spot honest with you, like, I mean, that might be the best place because and this is all being covered with them louvers, eh? Yeah. So whatever's on the firewall, you're not going to see my firewall. You can put it in the engine bay if that's what you're getting at. Or. Well, I think where you've got it right there. Right would be, there would be good, yeah. Yeah, like it seems to be the spot for it, does it not? I so. would, if I was going to put it here, I would put it here, but I would tilt it out a little bit just so you can get at those connectors easily to undo them. I understand to, what you're yeah. saying. And you can make a bracket. Some people make a little bracket that, you know, on a sheet metal or something, and you can have a, ta a like a tab that would. So them screws can come out, obviously. If you take them out, don't take them all out. Yeah. It don't, you know, obviously don't separate the case, but yeah, you can. So how do, you, how do you suggest doing that? Like just taking them out a little ways and yeah, no, you can take them out. Just like if you're going to, if you're going to make a bracket, just do one side at a time or something like that. Right. Cause if you open up this, then you're exposing all the electronics inside. Right. So just be careful with it. That's yeah. all I'm suggesting. But yeah, we just maybe make, make something to hold it. Um, you might even just, uh, you know, weld, weld like a little shelf off the firewall. How, how, do, how do I mount that? Like, how do I mount that to make that? Yeah, that's do what I, I'm Do I wrap that, like wrap, put something on, wrap it around like a... Like a strap or something? Yeah, yeah like you're gonna have to get creative with it, you know? There's different ways, like... So no, don't, don't put a screw in through the back side of it? No, that's not, <laughs> not the best idea, no. Um, yeah, you'll have to just sort of, you know, kind of maybe some, some yeah. channel, like three quarter channel, you could like almost slide it in or something, you know, slide it up in and, and then have something to, to hold it. Okay. You know, just I gotcha. think of, think of a few different things and you just yeah. kind of have to do different every car you do. Right. So it depends on what you got to work with, I guess. Also, um, I guess with it, if, if I stuck it, well, I guess be kind of, kind of close to your exhaust, would it not? Or would it, would that matter? The, har the, the harness you mean? Well, if I stuck that right there, I'm just saying I'd like to, if that was right there, would it be better or be, be worse or? Uh, I like to try and keep the connections to the ECU inside the car because it keeps them nice and dry. Okay, well, you then know, that's, that's, that's the place where we go then. It, you know, you yeah. if you, I know you're not going to drive in the rain, or but if it's sitting out, it's sitting out in the rain. Or I mean, let's or face it, if it gets caught in the rain, it gets caught in the rain. Yeah, yeah, know. but uh, I don't know. It's, it's really... I think the inside's yeah, the best place the for it. The is quite long, too, so if you did leave it in the engine bay, then you're going to have quite a bit of excess, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I think on the back side of this panel would be a, a really good spot for it. And then maybe having a hole either maybe right here would be good or I don't know what's what's in behind this fender here. Is there a way we can get no, up in it's there? No, it's just an inner fender. Could be cool. I think there's another. Yeah. yeah. There's a piece that goes down there, I think, in front of that, I think. Yeah. Like you could cut a hole right here for the harness. And yeah. Have the harness hidden in here. But it would, might get. Yep. I, would, I think I would leave the harness inside. Inside. If, inside yeah. there. Okay. And just. You know, my thinking of not getting it wet, not getting it anything. Not getting any dirt on it or anything, yeah. I just want to look here for a second. Because there's also, there's also the side of this. Yeah, that's another good You know, spot, there's yeah. a side of that. Yeah, the, the, the more, the easier it is to work on, the better too, right? So let's get the harness and I'll show, show you. So these will be plugging into the ECU, right? How do I know which, uh, that must be plug and play too, is it not? See blue right there. Oh, okay. So you just go like that. Yeah. And there's supposed to be uh, little screws on here to help pull them in. So have to, do you still have your old harness? I do. Around? Yeah, so you have to take the little, the bolts or the, okay. the machine screws or whatever off there and that sort of threads in okay and holds them in there yeah 
Okay. Oh, I had that upside down. That's why it wasn't going in. There we go. No worries. I would do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there you go. So this will be kind of up in there, and then you'll probably also have these relays and fuses in there, right? And this is what's going through the firewall. That's going through the firewall. So we, want, we want a little distance down yeah. for that to come in the hole and fit, right? You wouldn't want that right behind the hole. No, and you can move this a little bit, okay. too. But these wires here would be... These going inside? These are going to the da underneath the dash. And okay. this would probably go over, a, you know, usually that's under the dash. You can have it on this side if you want. Okay. Wherever you're going to plug in your scan okay. tool. So that sort of gives you an idea that, you know, if we have it up in here. Gotcha. You might have a little bit of a loop and then go through the hole. Or you could have it over this way. You know? Or to be honest with you, I can have it... I, I can have it... Um, right on the front of that out further if it wants. You can have it right on the front of that. Right in the middle there. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, you can, there's because lots. Because the dash. There's a lot of length here. Like, look how long this is, right? <laughs> so it kind of might be nice to have it in the middle. Yeah, like, are you going to have something covering that? Or? Well, the dash comes out to here. Okay. Right, the dash goes from here all the way over, but the dash would cover it. Mm -hmm. The only thing I will say is, you know, obviously make it so that we can take this out if we ever have an issue, but. You so know. I should be, I should, before I, before I mount that, I should have the dash in there to find it the best spot. I would say, yeah, probably. So we'll have to leave that with you, I guess. But yeah. we can look at, what we'll do at this point is, I guess, look at this and where this is going to land in the engine bay. So maybe I'll just sort of drape it through the windshield. Yeah, sure. And that'll give you an idea. Good. Just going to make one of those today, but we'll make one tomorrow. But I might make it today. So. I just got that intake setting on there. That's not even the one I'm using. So. Yeah. That's right. Starter. Yeah. So your power feeds. So like your battery will have a power wire going to the starter. Yeah. And then these will go to that same post on the starter with power, right? Yeah. And then this is. And it's kind of like intuitive, right? So like you're going down to the starter. Well, that plug is going down to the crank sensor, which is right beside the starter. You know? Okay. Kind of thing. This. Didn't know that, but I do now. Yeah. So like maybe before I leave, I should label some of these for you with a piece of masking tape. Like that's an O2 sensor, you know? But yeah. uh, let me just sort of yep. look Bye. through it here first and then we'll... So... And some of it I can pin off of this to have yeah, it hang like, it so it hangs nice. Yeah, you can do that. Um, like you might even want to do a hole right in the back in the center. And then what I've seen some people do is then you have just all your... You have a set of wires coming down this side of the intake and then a set of wires coming down that side of the intake. So it kind of splits off, right? Yes. So that would that be the big hole you're talking about? Yeah, like the, the, the if you put the hole for the harness, you could yeah. put it right back in here and yeah. then you just have the wires coming through and they split up to one each, like one grouping on each side, right? So. Because this, basically this part here would go over to that side and then all these ones are going to go on this, this one, side. This one stays on this side? That goes to the tranny. Okay, it goes the okay. That goes yeah. the that just flop that from through the window maybe. Yeah. So. Okay. That, does that give you a better idea? So you have it kind of coming in like that. Okay. Cool. So you're gonna have plugs going into your ejectors, plugs going down in your coil rails, and a couple of wires going down. It seems like a nice place to hide all the excess wire down there behind the engine, does it not? Uh, like this. Yeah. Excess here. I would coil that up on the inside of the car. Okay. Yeah. And, and move. Put a couple zip ties on and move that thing, that rubber hose, all the way up to where. Yeah, wherever it goes through the fireball. Yeah. Give yourself a little bit of room so that you can, you know, still play with it. But. Uh, okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Some thought. You have to do some thinking on that, but I, th I think that that's kind of where we're going is probably going to look the best and the cleanest, you know. I like the idea of it coming, through the hole coming through the back. Yeah. And, you really and then I can run the wire maybe over to this this thing over here on yeah. this on this piece because it gives it takes takes up some of the wire yeah. instead of having to ravelled up yeah exactly and this almost looks like you made it for the ecu so oh i did uh, yeah there you go you're thinking ahead right yeah <laughs> yeah awesome so yeah and i think that'll give you the cleanest look like when you have that back in there and you have just, you'll just have a few wires you know laying down yeah. here people won't even be able to see it so it kind of makes a nice clean look right so yeah and plus i, I mean obviously i'm gonna have, you it, have it covered in have it covered in a little bit too yeah. 
Yeah, but it's this, pretty uh, basic. This is good too because it gives you know if you do have the harness coming in here and then looping around, it's going to be close to the heat and everything. So I think that's a pretty good spot to have it going through. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I guess what I'm what I'm thinking is, I'd like to have the hole probably up here. Right, almost dead center. Yeah. Yeah, dead center and there. Just watch the, you know, where where does your dash go down to? Where does that hang down to? Oh here. Okay. Yeah. Just make sure you have enough room to kind of snake it down underneath the dash. Right? Yeah. You don't want to. Uh, it can bend pretty, pretty hard. Well, would it? Once it comes through here, it'll be going over this way, would it not? Or yeah. you snake it down yeah. through and then come over that way? Yeah, that'd be great. This must have been for the old wiring harness, probably. Yeah. And that's a little bit bigger than that. And then I'll make something that'll fit that computer there. Like, it's generally, yeah. there, it's generally there in on cars anyways now. Most, is it? Yeah, a lot of cars, it'll be up in there. Like, you'll have, like, a kick plate for your feet to rest on, and then it'll be under the kick plate. But it's so high up there that you don't have to do anything. You can just mount it, and, yeah. and it'll be fine. And then maybe your relays and fuses will go right here, or something like that, right? Or even just down a little bit lower so you can get at them. Yeah. yeah. So this, this guy here. Yeah. Just right there. Well, that, se that seems and pretty. And then we will have to run a wire for the fuel pump. Um, so maybe the fuel pump wire can come over here and then run down along your frame rail to the fuel pump. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. No, that shouldn't be an issue. That's basically pretty. That's pretty that pretty makes, basic. That makes it nice where you have everything metal there because you can weld little studs and then put little hooks to to hold things in place or whatever you want, right? Like you can kind of get creative with how you hold the harness down, right? Yes. Rather than just having it flopping around. Well, I was. I've got a bunch of those little. I don't know, little ties with the rubber on them. Okay, yeah. yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you pro conduit and stuff like that. Yeah, probably. I gotta, I'm not sure. Like, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, those, those are those are great. Yeah, stuff like that. And you, won't, sizes. and you won't see the screw from the other side or the bolt or whatever. Okay, yeah. And I could weld studs on it too, obviously. That's what I think I'm gonna do with mine, just because I, I don't like putting holes in the firewall. If I can help with just water, things like that, get in. Gotcha. To eat your own. All the stud on there, and then this, and yeah. then and then bolt them on. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. I'm understanding a lot more. That seems pretty pretty it's good. It's not as hard as it, as people think. I think the trickiest part for people is usually wiring it up to the ignition switch, and that's probably where it's coming down and help you for an afternoon just to get. Yeah. The to run the wires is not much, you it's know. Really nothing, you know. Really, really nothing. So, um, this thing here, I guess the wire we're gonna have to run the wires to. Yeah, and if you don't like, like I said, if you don't like the looks of this, you can take off the components and mount it on your dashboard, right? Like this start switch, you can just drill a hole yeah. right through the dash. I think I can mount it somewhere where you're not going to see you it. Or put it just That's what I'm underneath. thinking. Like yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like I mount it underneath the yeah. dash or something like that. Yeah. Um, that's cool. Um, have, you can even have like, so there'll be a wire for a check engine light, so you can put a little bulb on the dash for a check engine light. I don't want no check engine light. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how you know something's wrong, right? Well, there you go. Yeah. Maybe, 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 maybe. We're bringing you into the 21st century. Yeah, maybe. Uh, what else was I going to ask? Uh, on this engine, um, I have got no exhaust manifolds. Yes. Would you run the factory manifolds just because they probably would last forever, or would you run would you an aftermarket header on it? Well, I, I know Jolene had sent me a couple links to some headers and stuff. There's lots of, you know, shiny stuff out there, but uh, unless you're going with long tubes, you're not going to get much power added. Okay. So you can use the the. Uh, You've answered cast, my question. Cast steel manifolds. You can yeah. Cut in the cut off the flanges and weld my own pipe on. So like, if the flange is on a weird angle, you can cut it, weld the pipe on a bit of an angle. Yeah. Who knows how long those welds are going to hold up? You know where it's cast and everything. But I've done it, you know, on my car before, and I never had any issues with it. Okay. And how'd you weld it, MIG welder? Just MIG, yeah. I knew it. Yeah. I knew it. I've yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, you, I don't know if you can see or not. My. You can see um, when you tilt your head down here, see the big hole there? I got cut my chassis and I've got a piece in there. Oh, yeah. So that's my exhaust is running down and then I'm going to come out to the pipes. That's awesome. um, the exhaust manifolds that are on these don't run back that far, do they not? Or They would land, you know, just going off my memory, they probably land right on your frame here. Are you serious? Right. They kind of come out there, do they? Yeah, so you're probably going to have to cut the flange and then angle it back in a bit. And okay. Then go, and then do like a hard 90 to go. What about the fa the other the the ones that you buy? Are they in tighter or uh, 
I'd rather see you cut up a set of cast iron manifolds than buy some and then have to cut them all up too. So yeah, I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? So I would say just try and get some cast iron manifolds. They're dime. Like I used to throw them away because I had so many. Well, so good for of, you. Lots of guys have them around. Yeah, so. we're, we know where a set are for uh, they're on the marketplace for hundred dollars. I think there's for cast iron. Yeah, I think. Oh, don't, yeah, don't pay that much. <laughs> don't don't pay that much. No, talk to Jared. Yeah. They'll help you out. <laughs> <laughs> they're almost giveaway then. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty much. Okay. Um, he had some other stuff there with it, but a um, hundred dollars didn't seem sound like much for if you wanted a set of manifolds. But if they're if they're beautiful, like never been used or you know very minimal rust or something, maybe then yeah. But uh, okay, I would say if you're gonna cut them up and put them on, it doesn't matter what you use, right? Yeah, exactly. Like so, and on this side, what's it look like on this side? Like just on your memory, does that is that manifold gonna be okay on this side? Not gonna have any problem with that steering box. Uh, you're you're pretty tight in here with the manifold, so yeah, you might have to get one, get one and try it and see. It's gonna be pretty pretty close. Sure. Awesome. Not to scare you. No, but you can actually um, if the manifold like you can actually cut it and put a little bit of a, a plate in it, right? Yeah. So you can cut cut a whole, like cut a notch in it. Basically, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So you can do things like that and get creative. Like I said, you just have to make sure that the welds hold up. So basically, I have to get a set in front to really try it out. Yeah, before you go with anything aftermarket, I would try the stock ones and play around with them a little bit first, and then and then go aftermarket if you really have to. Because you because this one, see where this port's coming out. Yep. You got that, and then I think the flange usually comes down right right into it would come right into this, right? Okay. Um. Yeah. What you could do is you could turn around backwards, but then this is in the way, so it's kind of a tricky scenario. Yeah. Is it possible of you changing the geometry of this, or is that sort of that's well, staying how it is for now? I'm not sure there. I've taken a lot of room away from my gas pedal area by doing that. Oh, okay. And, yeah. you know, there's kind of, when you sit in there, it's kind of, it takes away from the gas pedal. I yeah. got, um, but I guess if you're going to drive, you're fine putting your foot over a little further. That's <laughs> all. I was almost thinking of putting the gas pedal maybe on the front of the, on the front of that little, uh, okay. thing there but your foot would be you cocked can. yeah your foot would be up like that but yeah. um half a dozen one the other when you're yeah. doing custom stuff That's, like this on that note you're going to need a gas pedal and a throttle cable too so when you're talking to jerry yeah he'd probably have some for you just he's just down the road right yeah yeah so centerville the gas pedal i, I can do my own throttle cable any as long as yeah, it's yeah you can use whatever you want yeah if you want like i just use the truck ones because they're you know they work but it's just basically a top, typical throttle cable you know yeah same thing you same thing you use on a lawnmower or anything yeah. else right so yeah yeah okay so i'm fine there but yeah whatever whatever you have kicking around i'd use that for sure i suppose if just to get the gas pedal out of the truck and get the gas pedal throttle yeah. cable would be that'd be the way to go it would it not like the, the pedal has like a bracket that's like got like three bolt holes in it yeah you can just mount it wherever you want and then it has on the end of the on the end of the pedal there's a metal arm with a hole in it Right, with a notch. So. That's what I think I'll do. Yeah. I, I think that would just make it easier. I've made a lot of gas pedals before. Yeah. And to make a gas pedal is not as simple as you think sometimes. The geometry. And well, stuff. it takes time. Yeah. To yeah. get the cable to run, get the you know, get it working right, and put it on the floor. Yeah. It takes time, and, and if you haven't got a parts car with the gas pedal that you want, it takes it takes yes. time. The, uh, and, and when I make cars, it generally means I make everything, right from the gas pedal to the to the suspension to the hood opening to the latch to to the windows just as an example the the bracket on the throttle cable for a, for a truck is a square clip connector that would go through a hole like a square hole in the firewall oh, on okay it's just like the square clip on the on the intake itself it's got a little plug-in thing well no it's not that like an actual at the end of the plastic sheathing that's on the throttle cable okay. itself there's a little clip that hold to hold that sheathing in place yeah okay so you would use, i would use like i've used stuff like this in the past to punch a square hole in the firewall and that right there will punch a square hole in the firewall? Yeah. That's what those are for. I've, I've, I've got me speechless. I've never used one before. Never used one? It's basically nope. just a shear, right? Yeah, I see. I, I've noticed yeah. that. That one's a circular one, to give you an example. Do you know which one I need for that? No. I, I mean, honestly, with for when you actually do it, you can probably just like cut a hole with a grinder or something. And yeah. Work, you know, but that's nice, though, to just tighten up a bolt and, and, and shear a square hole. Yeah. So you just put that drill hole in there, enough yeah. for your bolt to go through. Yeah. Put that on one side, put your nut on it, and put that on the other side, and then it goes to the, 
that just goes through and, and shears a hole. Just goes boom, yeah, like that, right? Better example of one I brought for the uh, for the harness itself. So Are we going to cut a hole for the firewall? Can we do that for the um, for the harness? We can try, but I think we're going to have to look at the harness again a little more closely and figure out what size. Either if this will work, this may work, or we might need to use a hole saw. Do you have hole saws? I do. I don't like this. I don't yeah. like them. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I you know generally I would draw a hole with a marker and hit it with a plasma cutter. Okay, yeah, you can do that too. Yeah, yeah but that seems much easier to me. Well, than, if it's the right size, yeah. <laughs> it seems well, much easier than having a rough edge, you know. Let me take the left here. Yeah. And I have a tape measure. I'm not hiding him on you. I got, I do got. I know he's asked a couple times for tape measure and haven't given one yet. I'm, I, I'm the kind of guy that likes to guess. So what do you think? I, I'm thinking that the, the right there is the. Like you know, in, you know what I mean? This inside diameter is what we need. Well, I'm thinking, see this line right here? Okay, yeah, right that there. Is, I'm thinking that's our line. Right part. But you, uh, I'm going to put my glasses on. What do you think? Two inch it? Do says it says two inch in the book. Well, the book's never wrong. Is it's it? just like the computer. It's it never looking, wrong. Yeah, exactly. It's always um, right. That punch I have there, you can measure that. It's close to two inch, I think. This thing here? I see, you've, this I, I see if you punched her. Yeah. Right across there. How's yeah, it? it's pretty close. So we can try it with this one, and then if the hole is a little bit too small, you might have to just file oh, it Oh, I can die grind it out. Dig yeah, I want to see that bad boy work is what I want to yeah. do. So all I have to do is drill a hole that big? Yep. Yeah, so we'll, you know, mark it in the center or wherever you think the center is, and then drill it. Screw that on and put yeah. a hole in it. Yeah. And I, I would say if we can try and get the harness so that it's... Yeah, in the center? Like right, I'm reach back there, but like in line with the bottom of the intake at the center, so somewhere around there. So you're what? Six inches up from the squares. I can measure down off the top if you want. See if you can from the top. And we're gonna punch a hole. I don't know if I got a drill bit big enough to. Oh, would you have like a step bit or something? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the shop of many tools that he doesn't have. I do, I do, you know what, I used to use them step bits a lot, a lot, and then one time I stopped buying them, I got, I got a plasma cutter, I got a 375 Tomahawk Lincoln, and, um, <laughs> you can use a plasma cutter to start it if you want, yeah. um, I'm just, I just want to throw the sparks around out, around 9 inches I'm thinking, what do you think, Would yeah, you that's that? fine, nine, that look about right? 9 inches down from the top of that, from the top of whatever I was measuring from, Do, do, do. In the center or not in the center? Yeah, like close to the center. Uh, so I look at the dash. You're, you want to be pretty much staying on center? I can, I can get her center if you yeah. want. Not a problem. I can guess as far as that goes. Yeah. Eyeball, uh, right? I guess a lot. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but most times it's okay. That's not the center. Right? Is, would that be on the bottom of that hole, nine inch, or on the top, or in the, is that nine inch the middle? Center, center of the hole is what I'm saying, nine, around nine inches. So I'm just going to guess. How far up is that off of your um, angle there? The bottom of the hole would be, we'll say five and a half. About there, about there, and I guess the center of that, and I'm all right with it. It looks fine to me. Yeah, I think five and a half would be great. The center, to the bottom of the hole or the center? To the bottom of the hole. Perfect. And I, and I can cut that out any time as far as that goes. Yeah, you don't have to do it today. Yeah, I can, cut, I, can, I can cut that out any time. It'd be easier with the engine out. Yeah. Yeah. I can just do that any time. Yeah, well, you have it marked now. So. Yeah, I have it marked. And then your ECU, well, you can play around with that and see what you can ECU's do. ECU is that computer thing, right? Yeah, yeah. That'll just go in. That'll go in there. That This here. This moves on top of this, does it not? It moves. Yeah, it slides okay, around. slides on that. And then that will go, I don't like putting that where the dust is, but whatever. Yeah, I'll, I'll make something there. Maybe I can mount it on like that, and then that was there, that holds it out. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. If, 
you know what I'm trying to say. So even I like, get a couple of little L brackets. You got it? Yeah, just L bracket, like something hold, sticking out here to, to rest on. And then a clip at the top it would be all you need, eh? Maybe I can make like a gas tank strap. Yeah. Like I can hook it on here, bring it up around here while the stud on there. Yeah, just make sure you have enough room for the for this connector on the side. It sticks out a little ways. Okay. So you look at that, right? So Yeah. You're not working with much there, but yeah. True. Okay. I can handle that. And then I can weld a stud on the top and then I can put a gas like a gas tank strap on yeah. it, I guess. Okay, now I'm starting to starting to get a little bit. And I can take it up further if I want to, and I just put something on the back side of it to hold it out, maybe a yep. piece of rubber or that didn't cost you two hundred and fifty dollars, did it? No, that's what I usually sell them for. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Jeez man, we, <laughs> are you it's serious? Being unlocked and everything where it's, you know, ready to fire without uh, ignition and stuff. Okay. Yeah. We give them a hat and shirt. We got to weigh cheap. <laughs> wow. Goes around, comes around, right? There you go. Fuck, I have to get my body fill tool out. <laughs> There's a little bit of lint in there. Is it, would, that, would that be cleaned out before you start? Yeah, yeah, that's a good catch. Yeah, we we'll clean that out if you can. Just blow that out, obviously. Yeah. Okie dokie. I would keep that out of the dust in here, too. <laughs> Maybe I can just take some tape and run over the end of it. Yeah. I got some tape, but so it, 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 I guess that stuff does matter a lot to keep the dust out of it, eh? Uh, just trying to avoid any headaches, right? Especially like the fuel fuel line, fuel injectors can get clogged up. That kind okay. Of stuff, right? I had some tape there. I'm gonna put some tape on the end of that right now. Yeah, it's pretty. Seems to be pretty basic stuff, I guess. I mean, it's not rocket science. Let's break it down. You know, compartmentalize it. For it's your not own. rocket science, he says. Yeah. I so I, I got gotcha. you. I got you. So basically, I know what's going on there now to run the, the wiring harness. That seems pretty basic and easy. Yeah. Seems pretty easy. Yeah, the harness, that seems very easy to do that. Get Got it in place anyways. Yeah, we got eight of those things. What are those things all about? Those little adapters? Yeah. In there, that's, that's because the... Uh, the harness will do like an LS1 engine, like out of a Camaro or a Corvette. Okay. Adapters give you the adaptation for the truck injectors, so that's all there. And that's what this is for too. So this is to adapt to the truck mass airflow. Okay. From the car style harness. I have to remember there's a piece of dust in there, and we'll check before it comes time. Yeah. Just going to rub some tape over top of this because. Just want to check to make sure that it's, it's, it's going to fit just fine. So I'll leave that. That fits. Place. So then, we're, so when we, when we ordered the harness, Dane got us to order some the adapters or the little eight little things in there. Is that one of the things you got us to order? They sent us with the harness. That's that was an extra piece that Jolene had to buy. So okay. These, these they sent with the harness like, upon request. So that goes from your LS1 injector. So those go to the injectors. I need the eight injectors or eight cylinders. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. So yeah, basically what I'll probably say is if you can get that hole made and the ECU mounted, the next time I come we can start plugging things in. And, yeah. You know, if you're at that stage. And then the uh, fuel fuel system will be another bit of a project for you, right? Sort of like I haven't got even got a gas tank for yeah, it yet. Yeah, so I mean, I know you're a little ways up from that, right? I've got... What if, what what ha happens with the okay so so all I, I don't need um, a full a fuel a fuel sending unit. No, you just need a line going into the tank. I just need a line going into the tank, and that's yeah. it. So and 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 a, and a place to put gas in. Yeah, of course. Yeah, filling that gap. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, just look like somewhere where, like, you know, some of the fuel sending units just have like a line going into the top of the tank down yeah. to the bottom. And then you just have to fuel line under that. And gotcha. Use, so, like I said, try and use as much steel line as you can. And just if you're going to use rubber, just try and, you know, make sort of jumpers. So, when that steel line comes out of that tank, should it have a certain fitting on it that I can. If you're just going to use steel lines, I would just, with rubber hoses to connect them. So, yeah. I would use a rubber hose from that piece to your, to your steel line that's on the frame rail. And then 
go from there to the regulator and then from there to the fuel pump. It, the so the pressure, would there be 60 pounds pressure there on that rubber line coming? There will be, yeah, yeah. So you'll have to use, like don't use the, the poor quality hose clamps, use the really good ones with the machine screw on them. You know, the I do know what you're talking about, yeah. yeah. And they usually have two rings on them instead of having... Yeah, they have a little square knot on one yeah. side and the machine screw on the other, yeah. Okay, so. gotcha. So you never came... Yeah, good Good thing you said that. So I have. I need a gas tank with a steel line running, and that's it. I have to have a return line too, do I not? Yeah, you'll have to Two have a return. Lines. Yeah, return, the return just has to go in somewhere into the top of the tank. Like it doesn't have to go right down to the bottom, right? Yeah. yeah. And should I have, I don't need a filter on the bottom of that? Um, it might not be a bad idea. Like sometimes they have little filters on them, like a little flat filter. Yeah. But uh, you're going to have a fuel filter regulator there anyway. Yeah. So. Okay. It cool. might stop you from sucking up anything substantial that's in the tank. How old is the gas tank? Well, I've got a, I've got a, I was out back yesterday. Um, I found, I found your, your, I found John Wilson's back to his truck. I found his headboard. So I was out there yesterday looking for stuff and uh, I found it. There's a new gas tank out there. I, I think it could fit. I have to change and weld things up, but it's a new gas tank. So I'm not scared to weld it. Okay. So I think I'll just start gearing that gas tank up yeah, yeah. and uh, go from there. Like yeah. weld a steel, a couple steel lines in it, weld a filler hose for it yeah. and then and go from there. I'm just trying to rack my brain. I can't remember now. When I said to order the fuel filter regulator and the pump, I'm thinking that, yeah, your fuel filter has to go before the pump, right? So it has to be filtered first, then the pump, right? Okay. I think that's right, so. Usually it was the pump and then the filter. Okay. Because you pumped it through the filter. Yeah, you need the pressure and then the, yeah. the regulator would send it back. So yeah, you're, I think you're right. So fuel pump first, then the filter slash regulator, and then there would be a return line going back. I'll double check what I had in my, yeah. what the setup I had in my car, but yeah, I think that's right. Okay, yeah. and and what kind of can you t can anything be tuned in this like with with I don't know. Oh yeah. We yeah. it can That's be. That's the whole purpose of it. Yeah. So you can you can tune it. You can add more power. You can put turbochargers on it and tune it for that. You can do all mm -hmm. kinds of things with superchargers on it and tune it. Um, yeah, and you're able to do all that. Uh, I'm not a super advanced on the tuning. I can do basic stuff like if you put a cam in it, I can help you get the cam running good and stuff like that. But with turbos and stuff, it's a whole other can of worms. So. Okay. I try to stay away from that, but from the basic stuff, I can help you get, you know, get a few more ponies out of it. I, I basically want, I basically <laughs> would like to push the button to start it, and it for it to run good. Yeah, and basically. that's the nice thing about that's this. When everything is set up properly and everything's ready to go, it's like it could sit for six years or six months, and it would start the same. You know, turn the key on and press the button, it'll start right up. There's no pump in the gas. There's no choke. You know, it's it's, it's just we like have a bunch of those, outside. don't we, baby? Yeah, <laughs> it's just like your truck outside. You know, as long as it's got a good battery in it, it should yeah. start right up. I think we got every one with a, yeah, yeah, too much pressure to the carburetor and every one of them flood. Oh, really? It's yeah. like <laughs> High pressure fuel pumps or? Well, it's just a, a, few, a regular fuel pump electric. is really generally too much. Yeah. Or electric fuel pumps is regularly too much for a carburetor. Yeah, they don't generally they only have mechanical ones on the side Yeah, of the they do, yeah. but like a lot of times we had issues oh, okay. um, where we didn't have certain things. Right. And uh, Try and put an electric one on. And, yeah. Yeah, okay, interesting. Yeah, I don't know much about carbureted stuff. I just kind of grew up with this stuff, right? So that's what I mm -hmm. focused on. I do know. Cool. Well, that's good. We've got it figured out sort of what we need to, what we need to do or what I need to do, which is not much. Uh, drill a hole, uh, get the computer ICU in the right place. <laughs> yeah, we'll call it the ICU. Yeah. And the ICU, the computer <laughs> in the right place. It's not the ICU? No, that's where you're going. Oh, yeah. Right. What is you it called? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Uh, the ICU. That's where I go, the ICU. Yeah. What's the computer called? ECU. ECU. Engine control unit. Engine control unit, did not know. Anyways, we'll get that in place, made me smile. Um, we'll get a hole cut there, we'll get that, in, the computer in place, I'll say computer because I'll mess it up again. Yeah. Um, like Patina and Pantina. <laughs> I'll get that in place. Um, and then it's plug and play on that, more or less. I yeah. have to get a gas tank in it and, and rig a gas tank up for this. And that's like uh, old Elvis here. Um, as you watch me build this car, I'm even gonna make the gas tank. <laughs> Like from the gas tank to the gas pedal to the to the windows to the front window to the brake system to the air ride to the the A to the Z and that's what takes the time I guess you know is is making things and uh, I appreciate you coming and help me out. No worries. Yeah, don't we uh, we'll pack this stuff up for now and I think yeah. next time maybe next time I come if you're further along we can play with it again and see where. Uh, Are you rushing me now? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm excited. <laughs> there you go. 
He's excited for me. That's a good thing. So basically, that it's going to go fairly fairly easy once I get everything in place. Um, you know, I guess one of my next my next little projects will be maybe get a gas tank rolling because I, I have to have a gas tank. Yeah, it's pretty much the next step would be to plumb your fuel system in, and then your bat, and of course your battery. So you could do that at any yeah. point. And then we can, you know, get the fuel system primed and. I buy, I buy battery th boxes at Speedway. I'll show you my battery box. Um, they're pretty. They're pretty reasonable and pretty. They're pretty reasonable, I guess. Uh, I got some stuff there on that. That. That's a battery box. I mean, I don't. I think it was thirty bucks. Oh wow! Like, I don't know. Put that anywhere's. It's so it, it is so brand new. It hasn't had a spanking yet. It hasn't even come out of, the, out of the bag yet. Nice. I mean, it doesn't. It's kind of got a vintage look to it too, I feel like. And that bolts the new yeah. battery in. It's kind of a huge looking thing, but. I bought it. Do you have room for that in there? I'm not sure if I got room for that or not. And I still got a lot of, yeah, I, sh I should have, like, I got a lot of sparks flying around these, like you said, probably stuff that plug and play. Probably doesn't help it out any, eh? With no, dust I would and try to keep that, if you can, put a bag over it or something, right? Just to make sure. Put a bag over it, he says. Yeah, I've got a lot of sparks flying on that sort of stuff, and it's kind of... Got myself. Yeah, and you'll have you'll have a bit more wearing to do with that too. So. <laughs> uh, not really interested in that, but whatever. <laughs> this is a battery ball. I don't know. Well, you built this garage, didn't you? Yeah, well, sort of, yeah. yeah you must have been somewhere. No, no, I didn't go that far. No. I was thinking they were going in there somewhere, okay. maybe. And it's going to be up a bit high for for the for the battery on this thing. Could you put this in the trunk, or are you trying I to stay away from that? I can. Because what I'm thinking is, you can put it in the trunk, which will keep weight off your front steering, of your manual steering. Yeah. And and where I got the engine back a little bit helps, what I would think. Okay. And yep. my, my other thought was the, the hydraulics for the airbag suspension, like the pumps and everything yeah. are back there. So the shorter power run you have for those, the better they're going to work. So you can just have a, you could have it in the back, and you'll have, you know, your power, your short power wires, and you'll have a ground in the chassis. Yeah. And you just have to run one you know, decent sized power wire up here to the starter. So that's just something. To think about I, I can do that. Yeah. That, that can happen and that'd be easier to mount it in there than it would be probably yeah. up underneath here. I'm not sure, but best, yeah. yeah. So there you go. I've got a lot of stuff to figure out and uh, it's going to take some time. I'll keep you up in bed at night. Maybe, thinking. Jolene does that. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, we're signing off. Let's, well, we might as well give away a hat or a shirt, have we? Yeah. Let's give away a hat or a shirt. Thanks, Dane, for showing up, man. Appreciate it. I've got some. I've got some um, foresight of what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Now I know who to ask questions when I have body work uh, troubles, right? Well, hopefully I can get down and help you out sometime. Yeah, I could. Uh, you know what I mean? I could come down for a day or so. You get a bunch of stuff you want it done, or you know, I can um, do a fair bit of work in a in a day. Yeah. So you're basically just trying to smooth off your firewall on your car, just, just make it sm smooth things out and yeah. simplify, just like you do with these yeah. builds. Because the more things you have, the more things can go wrong, and the more things to the more things to look at it makes takes away from your eye of the beauty yeah. of the car, does it not? Yeah. Sort of. I I I feel that way too. Would be honest with you. Is the computer not working. No. I'll open the door. You, the motor ammo yeah. We are. Yeah. We're excited about that. That's a great time. Yeah. Have you been? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to go to see some of the cars, you know. It's kind of like the Moncton Nationals, but it, I think it's a little even bigger than that. You know? So, it'll be a good time. <laughs> Fina chewing the ice. Huh? Having a hell of a time. Huh? Wish I felt like that doing that in the snow, but not really. <laughs> Just getting a bath. Having a hard time? Hmm. It's so waste up here, I jumped up a frame and had to chuck it out the front door instead of the back door. 
See the frame there? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to pull in too far because I might just slide right out. <laughs> Working? Yep. All right, here we go. How many comments? 7,000? Wow! He's trying to read. It failed. You've got a jacket on. Don't be like that, Dane. Don't be like that now. We did today. We give you one. Oh, there you go. We had to pay for that two hundred and fifty dollar computer. Yeah. Wow. He said that was a, a a gift, and I was thinking, thanks, man. But I didn't realize it was that much of a gift. Oh, wow. It's gonna work today. Sorry, everybody. It's not going to work today. We might do what Dane said. We might. <laughs> We might, but we appreciate Dane coming and more or less just going over um, how to hook up a 5.3 if you're interested in doing that project. It's, he explained it pretty simple. He showed you all the stuff that you needed. He, other than you going to the place to buy the wiring harness, um, we have the, the information on that too, where you to go buy the wiring harness. I guess if you just looked online, you would find it. Uh, if you're like me, you would never find it because I don't go online and find things. Jolene does that for me. But anyways... Have a good one, everybody. We're getting closer to that 5-3.